Hey, it's I don't know what's RC, and in this video, we'll talk about all the different changes with Dungeon Ring because of the evolution of combat. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with the binds. So they are pretty much the same thing than before, and in this guide, I will assume that your main way to kill monster will be with melee because you need to get three times more melee experience and range experience and then magic experience. So that's why I recommend to use melee as the main way to kill monsters. With that in mind, the first bind you want is a melee weapon, then after that a plate body, range weapon, um, then for the fourth bind, it's either a blood necklace, this is what I recommend, if you don't have one, then it's the shadow seal hood, and if you don't have this, then simply take legs. And for the fifth bind, it's exactly the same thing. With the evolution of combat, it's very, very important to have at least two attack style. So that's why I really recommend to get a melee weapon and a range weapon as soon as you can. Many people are wondering what is the new best melee weapon in the game and the problem is there is no real answer. So the thing is all the 3 to 1 weapon in the game have exactly the same DPS, so the same damage per second, so they will kill monster at the same speed. The only difference is their attack style and the level you need to actually get the item in dungeon ring. So for example, the twin sword is a slash weapon that will be very efficient against a forgotten ranger, zombie ranger and more monsters, but those two are the main monster that are way to slash. If you want to be strong against, uh, for example, dragons and animated books, then you will want to have a stab weapon, so a spear, and if you want to be strong against uh, Mysterious Shades and Skeleton Ranger, then you will want to have a mole. So what I recommend is if you're less than level 107, then for sure you want to have the mole. After that, personally, I still prefer to have the 2N sword because the Forgotten Rangers and the Zombie Ranger are very common in, in Dungeon Ring. While, for example, dragons, you never see a dragon, so I don't really recommend to have the spear. And other, so my main weapon is still a two-end sword, but the mole is probably as efficient than the two-end swords. It's kind of the same problem with the body, so they have exactly the same defense and the same life boost, the only difference is their class, so either melee, range and magic. So for example, a melee armor will be resistant to range and weak to magic. So first of all, I don't really recommend to have the mage armor, because in Dungeon Ring, while well, you are running most of the time, you only get hit once per melee monsters. So they hit you and then you simply run away from them so they cannot hit you back once again. While for the range and the magic monsters, they can hit you multiple times, so that's the main thing that will damage you. Okay, so the real question is between the melee and the range armor. So first of all, you might think that the range armor will be better because its weakness is melee and you don't really care to have a weakness in melee because you don't really get it by melee monster very often. But when you take into consideration the protection prayer, then it gets really tricky. The thing is that a weakness with a protection prayer, so all the damage is half, will be more resistant than a normal stat in a in a normal. So this means that Primal plate bodies with protection mage will be overall more resistant than, for example, the Sagittarian armor, which is range, with protection melee. But in the other end, a primal plate body alone, so without protection prayer, will be weaker than the Sagittarian uh, body because you will you don't really care to have a, a melee weakness. Basically, to make it simple, if you don't mind using protection prayer, then I recommend to use the primal plate bodies. And if you simply don't want to pray protection prayer and pray um, thermal, for example, then I recommend to use the Sagittarian body. Okay, so guess what? With the ranged weapon, it's exactly the same problem. So there is no really best option. The two main weapons are the ex bow and the Sagittarian Shortbow. So first of all, let's look at the defense part. So obviously the ex bow is better because it has defense and life boost, while the Shortbow has none of that. In the DPS section, then at the first look, the Sagittarian Shortbow is way better. It's nearly 
50% more DPS. But the thing is, the Exunterable has an increased damage against a magic monster. So if the, ma the monster you are fighting is magic and it has a very high level, then you will be able to have a really boosted attack. While with the Sagittarian Shortbow, it's always the same DPS. So the thing is, if you are fighting very high level monsters that are using magic, for example, the Necrolord, the Boss, or Forgotten mages that are for example level 198 then the ex bow will be better than the Sagittarian, the Sagittarian shortbow but for regular monster the shortbow will be best. Personally I prefer to keep my ex because I prefer to be able to kill high level monster faster than low level monster. And finally for the last binds what I recommend is a blood necklace that will boost your critical hit by 5% so it's a quite big boost. After that it's a Shadow Seal Hood which is probably the only thing that can make the floor faster. For example legs. Legs they will be good but they won't really make the floor faster. Easier maybe but not really faster. While the Shadow Seal Hood if you're in a room with a puzzle and all the monsters are human or things like that and they cannot see you then you will do the puzzle faster so the floor faster. While with the legs you will simply be able to survive more. Okay, so now we'll talk about the difference when actually training dungeon ring. So first of all, it's way easier to survive. So you shouldn't die. You have plenty food, plenty armor, plenty life boost. So it's very easy to survive. Another thing is that killing monster is quite faster. Not really that faster, but enough to make a difference. And because you spend less time doing GDs, then this means that you will spend more time running, gating, and doing puzzles. So it's very, very important to gate. And one thing, because the, dun the GDs are easier and it's easier to solo them, it's very important that not only the keyer opens the door, you also have a responsibility to open the doors and follow paths. Before the evolution of combat, usually when a player found a GD, he will simply call it, gate it, then go back with the group and continue with the group until the group uh, face a dead end, then it will simply move the GGS to the GD. Now it's kinda different, when you find a GD, you call it, but you don't gate it and go back with your group. You start soloing the GD and you only move the GGS to the GD when somebody tells you uh, because they they reach a dead end, so you don't go back with your group, you solo the GD and you follow the path. Another big difference is with bosses, so most of them don't have weakness, so you can use any attack style, and most of them can be easily dealed. So I don't really recommend to wait until the end of the dungeon, and then everybody goes to kill the boss. With 2 player or 3 player it's very easy to kill any boss. Instead of using protection prayer, I really recommend to use soul split, with that you will simply not die. And with the boss fight, I recommend to use abilities instead of momentum. But I will talk about that later in the video. Okay, so now let's talk about the alt floor differences. So the main question is, should I dunge with a group or should I dunge solo? So first of all, it's really obvious that for high floors, so occult and warped, it's way better to be in a group than solo. The amount of experience we'll get will be way higher in a group. So the real question is with low floor, so 1 to 35. First of all, if you only want to have dungeon ring experience, then what I recommend is to do C1s because you will spend less time, the floors are faster, so you will spend less time um, doing floors that don't give you a lot of experience and spend more time doing floors that will give you really good experience. So if you only want dungeon ring experience, then do C1s with a group. However, if you care about overall efficiency, then I recommend to do C6 solo. Because when you are soloing, you can do fishing, woodcutting, fire making, and mining while doing your dungeon. And it's really, really good experience in that. So if you want overall efficiency, then do solo. If you want only dungeon ring experience, then do with a group and do C1s. Okay, so now we'll talk about the impact of the evolution of combat on potions. So first of all, the floors are faster, so this means that the percentage time spent with the boost in the dungeon will be increased. 
So it's a good thing, but in the other end, the potions are less efficient. So for example, with the overload, it used to be 26 boosts, but now it's only 17, and you no longer get HP regain after the 5 minutes. And with the renewal potion, you can easily do the dungeon without protection prayer now, so it's kind of less important, so prayer points are not that important, but I still really recommend to use both of them to make dungeon faster, a bonus is a bonus no matter how big it is. Okay, so now I'll talk about the ability bar, which is probably the main difference in combat. So first of all, the four first abilities, you should always have them, teleport to group gatestone, teleport to gatestone, create gatestone, and finally home teleport. So this is a must in any ability bar for dungeon ring. For the 8 others abilities, you can pretty much do whatever you want, but this is what I recommend. So I recommend to use momentum, if you don't know what it is, basically it's a super state, you deal a lot of damage, but you cannot use abilities. So why I recommend to use that is that battles in dungeon ring are very short, so you don't really have the time to grow a big adrenaline bar, so you don't really have the time to use uh, special abilities. And another thing is that in Dungeon Rain you want to be able to eat a lot of food anytime. So with Momentum you can do that and it's more relaxing, obviously. So first of all, to grow your Adrenaline Bar, to have Momentum, what I recommend, because I'm using melee and range attacks, is 3 melee attacks. It can be really any melee attacks, it doesn't really matter. And 3 other range attacks. Also, when you're a killing boss, I recommend... This is the only time when I recommend to use the abilities, because this is a long fight, you will be able to use multiple special abilities, this will actually make the floor faster, because it's a long battle. So for the boss battle, I recommend to have ultimate attack, for example Meteor Strike, and simply use it instead of momentum for the boss fight only, but obviously if you prefer to to kill a lot of monsters and use the abilities, you can, it will probably be faster, but it will be more click intensive, obviously. Okay, so that's pretty much it about this video. If you have any question, you can post a comment below. And yeah, see ya!